less than e2 minus beta an. There is nothing fancy there, very simple algebra. Yeah, you can take one over k here, but you don't need it, yeah. You can forget about that. So once again, where this inequality comes from, I divided cube into small ones. I have k minus one cubes like that, and one cube like th this one, but I have also renormalized the measure, right? The measure in each cube here, it will multiply by coefficient one over k, and then this, where these coefficients come from. But as I said, you don't need to think about that. So what is surprising, at least for me, if you do base of induction in an honest way, you get a very bad estimate in dependence on the doubling index if you use this very simple observation that there is one cube where the doubling is less than one half of the initial one, in the use induction, you're able to reconstruct precise estimate. There is no hope for a better estimate on n than we, we have here. So this was the proof. It's outlined in the notes, and it's, here it's even more simple than it was in the notes. And I can comment a little bit what goes next. So, What we did here, we propagated smallness from set of positive measure. Instead of open set in the ball, we said we have a, some wild set of positive measure. We know the measure, let us propagate the smallness of solution from this set. But really, the zero sets are of, dim of dimension one, dimension d minus one. So if we have an estimate on a set of larger dimension, if we know that our solution is small in some set, it is not positive measure, but in a sense has dimension larger than d minus one, we should be able to do a similar thing. And it is well known for real analytic functions. You can propagate smallness from subsets of co-dimension larger than one. But it's also true here. So let me define Hausdorff content of a set. It's almost Hausdorff measure, but it's a better thing. It's infimum of the sums of the ready to the power k if I take my set E and cover it by balls of ready RJ. K is the dimension. The advantage of Hausdorff content, if you compare it to Hausdorff measure, is that Hausdorff measure is almost always zero plus infinity. If you think about a set for all different case, k is not integer, it's a positive real. The Hausdorff measure is either plus infinity or zero, and Hausdorff content is some quantity, it's a nice number, bounded for bounded sets. So instead of propagating smallness from sets of positive measure, what we can do is to propagate from sets of dimension larger than d minus one. If delta is positive and E is 
set as before with d minus 1 plus delta Hausdorff content of E fixed. Then there is an estimate very similar to what we had before, just, just the same thing. So U is solution of elliptic equation, as always, with controlled coefficients. Then there are constants here such that this is true. Delta positive is very natural threshold. If you think about d minus one, one dimensional set, it could be a zero set of your function, and there is no way you get inequality like that. The zero sets are of dimension one. But if you control your function on a set that has a dimension larger than one, you can extend smallness in this way. Here the proof is similar, but is based on a very nice lemma on distribution of doubling index. That is due to Sasha Loganov and also published this year. And he said that if you divide a cube into many cubes, as we did it yesterday, we iterated this idea that if you have one cube, do it several times, you find many cubes with a smaller doubling index. But the truth is the number of Q where the doubling index is larger than one half of the initial one. Is like that. There is a constant c and a constant b naught, so that if you divide q into b to the power d small cubes the number of cubes with large doubling index is bounded by d minus 1 minus c. We did it yesterday without this one. It is simple. The truth is you can do one dimension further. And this is what allowed him to prove estimates for the nodal sets that have dimension d minus 1. In our proof, everything was simple because we were estimating something of dimension d. If you want to estimate the nodal set, you need more fine tools, and this is where they come from. When you know that the number of these bet cubes behaves like a power smaller than d minus 1. There are two questions that I want to formulate in connection to, to this result. Let us forget about these small sets now and go back to positive measure. I can. Say now that I have my equation in omega, E is subset, K is compact subset of omega, then iterating the estimate you can easily get this one with some constants C and gamma. And the question that we don't know how to answer is, what is the dependence of this constants to the boundary, to 
do the following quantity. I want to think about the distance from E to the boundary of the domain. When you go closer and closer, your constants start to blow up. You lose the control. But to have some nice estimates on these constants on that will give you quantitative way to go to the boundary would be extremely nice. And one of the reasons for that is a very old and well-known open problem. That is a problem about harmonic functions, just harmonic functions. Assume that you have a harmonic function in the unit ball Rd or 3. I will assume that this function is smooth up to the boundary. How smooth it's up to you to choose, say, C2 on the closed ball. And there is set that we denoted by F now on the boundary of positive measure, should say positive Hausdorff measure of dimension two. It's set on the boundary of positive measure, the dimension of the boundaries two in case of R3. Suppose that H is zero on F together with its normal derivative, or together with its gradient. Doesn't imply that the function is zero. In dimension two, we have complex analysis that helps a lot and tells you that this is the case without no, any smoothness assumptions. If you have harmonic function that vanishes on a positive part of unit circle with its derivative, then the function is zero. Here it's known that you need some assumption, some smoothness assumption, one plus alpha is not enough. But say C2, if you don't like C2, C infinity, a very smooth harmonic function up to the boundary, can you deduce that it's zero if you know that it has zero Cauchy data on a set of positive measure? If you have very good control on how our constants depend on the distance between the set and, and the boundary here in this inequality, there is hope to, to get to prove this, this one. And the second question <coughs> is what about the gradients of, of solutions of elliptic PDs? We know that you can ex propagate smallness for the gradients in the same way as you do it for solutions themselves, say this way. But this is simple. For the gradient, you, you would assume that the zero set is of dimension d minus two. So the threshold should be much further, and the question is, can you do it from sets of co-dimension larger than two? What we can do is so the question is, if delta is positive, can you extend smallness from the gradients if you assume that the dimension is 
Roger's on two, and we don't know the answer. What we know is that there are some situations of co-dimension larger than one when you can still do it. So the answer is yes for some delta that is some delta between zero and one. But we can't move this bound down to, to zero. So I think it's a good point to stop with those two nice questions that you can think about tonight. <laughs> and thank you very much for your attention. Yes. So you said this one is known? But this one is not known. What we know that there is some delta. We can go a little bit oh, below d minus 1. But not how much? But not all the way to d minus 2. That should be expected. Yeah. Sorry? Yes. Yes, yes. Yes. It no, here the, the, the smoothness. It looks like smoothness is important. Probably you can produce a counterexample that is infinity. I don't know, but the feeling is that if, if there is some smoothness, there is a hope to get, the, to get this one. Another question is if positive measure is the right characterization, or you can do a nice think about f and say that you you find a lot nice capacity that corresponds to to this property there any other questions so in question one you're assuming that both h and the gradient are zero and f is that correct yeah Thank you once again. And, yeah.